Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we've got a weird one for you. It's the top 10 things you should know about the reptilian conspiracy theory. Number 10. Origins there are two schools of thought on where the reptilians came from. Some believe they evolved here on Earth, left Earth and then mastered intergalactic travel and then returned millions of years later. Others believe their home planet is in the Draco constellations. Supposedly, they came to Earth thousands of years ago and shared the Earth with people. Then they either decided or were forced to go undercover and hid themselves from our reality. They also started to interbreed with humans by altering our DNA similar to the way that people alter computer code. The altering of our DNA had a twofold effect. They altered our DNA so we don't use our brain to its full capacity, putting a limit on our consciousness and making us easier to control. As evidence, some people point to the fact that we have reptile genes within our brain. In fact, the reptilian brain is the oldest of the three parts that control our brain. The second is that people with reptile DNA in them can be possessed by reptilians who live outside our realm of awareness in the lower fourth dimension. These human-reptile hybrids, considered demigods, were able to gain power in the ancient civilizations of Sumer, Babylon, and Mesopotamia. As humankind started to colonize the rest of the planet, the reptiles spread across the earth and became the royal families throughout the world. By having power in every single country, the reptilians have created a global prison that people don't even realize they're in. The prison was created by drawing country lines, which leads to endless wars and conflicts. Another way they control humans is by distracting us with media, entertainment, and even politics. They've also made the population stupid and lazy by poisoning their food, the air, and even the water. So just to sum it up, because it's a lot of very unusual information to take in, essentially the lizard people altered our brains to limit their ability. They installed most, if not all, world leaders throughout history. Those leaders in turn contributed to all major historical events. Finally, for thousands of years, they've been poisoning humans. And all of this was done to ensure that they control humankind. So right off the bat, the answer is yes. In this video, we're taking a drive to crazy town. Enjoy the ride. Number 9. The Reptilian Hierarchy According to David Icke, the writer who popularized the idea of a reptilian conspiracy theory, there is a hierarchy when it comes to reptilians. Notably, there are two classes of reptilian, full-bloods and crossbreeds. Full-bloods are aware that they are reptilians and can change forms between their human exterior and their true reptilian skin. Also, the full reptiles are not wearing an actual physical disguise. Instead, their human shell is created through vibrations that alter the human mind, so your brain just thinks it sees a human. It's similar to how the aliens disguise themselves in John Carpenter's cult classic They Live. This explains why reptilians are 5 to 12 feet tall but wear a human-sized disguise. They don't actually shrink in size, our brains just register them as normal human size because changing physical size is considered impossible. On the other hand, hybrids or crossbreeds are not aware that they are reptilian and believe they are human, but are controlled from the lower fourth dimension to push forward the agenda, also known as the New World Order. Among those two different types, there are different races. At the top of the pecking order are the Dracos, which are winged albino reptiles. Below them is a race called the Reptoids, who do not have wings and have brown and green skin. The Reptoids are soldiers and scientists and are responsible for secret government programs and bases, such as the Montauk Project, which was an alleged group of tests done by the United States Army where they tried to develop fringe technologies like time travel. Number 8. How to Spot One some general characteristics of the reptilians in disguise and people with reptilian DNA is that they are usually Caucasian and have piercing eyes that are green, hazel, and sometimes blue, but they can also change color. They also have low blood pressure and unexplained scars. Since they hide from humans, it may be impossible to see them, but one thing you should look for is how they act. Often reptilians and crossbreeds lack empathy, don't express love easily, are incredibly smart, and have a love for space and science. Supposedly, if you watch television in slow motion, you can get glimpses of the reptilian's true identity. Sometimes the image can be distorted and skin looks green or scaly. Teeth become distorted and their eyes look like those of reptiles. There are plenty of videos on YouTube of people who claim they have footage of reptilians shapeshifting. Number 7. Suspected Reptilian there are a number of famous people who are suspected of being reptilian. This includes such notable families as the Rockefellers in the United States, the Rothschild family from Germany, and the British House of Windsor. It's also believed that many of the presidents of the United States are reptilian, including Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, who is apparently higher than Bill in the reptilian hierarchy, Barack Obama, and both presidents Bush. In fact, the Bushes are an integral part of the conspiracy because of how many famous people are related to them. 
According to Ancestry.com, George W. Bush and Obama are 11th cousins, and Dick Cheney is his 9th cousin once removed. The blood relatives directly related to the Bushes include Abraham Lincoln, Marilyn Monroe, Pocahontas, Hugh Hefner, John Kerry, Vlad the Impaler, and Princess Diana. That means that possibly all of those people are reptilian as well. Not only have the reptilians infiltrated banking, government, and the world's royalty, but they are also some well-known and beloved entertainers like Bob Hope, Brad Pitt, and Angelina Jolie. Needless to say, with so many possible reptilian people among us, it makes it hard to trust anyone. You could even be a reptilian and not even know about it. Number 6. Blood Blood is very important to the reptilians. For one thing, they apparently consume it. They also eat parts of human brains and apparently prefer children because they aren't as full of poison as adults. Besides just eating our blood, bloodlines are also an important feature in the reptilian conspiracy. You can supposedly tell if someone is reptilian by tracing their bloodlines. It's believed that around 4800 BC, the crossbreeds emerged from the mountains of Turkey, Iran, and Kurdistan and started the early civilizations of Sumer, Egypt, Babylon, and the Indus Valley. This explains how humans became civilized and accomplished some amazing things. The crossbreeds kickstarted them. Thanks, lizard overlords! From those civilizations, humans began to migrate and the reptilians went with them. So Ike claims that all the bloodlines of the supposed reptilian people listed above can be traced back to that area. Ike also says that there are markers in some people's physical blood as well. He points out that from the area of the world where the hybrids originated, there are more people with an incredibly rare blood type called RH and RH negative. Other than just being rare, when a baby is born with RH blood, their skin turns blue, and this is supposedly where the term blue blood comes from. Number 5. The Bible As proof that the reptilians do exist, David Icke points to a number of passages in the Bible. One of the most famous stories is the fall of man. In Genesis, Adam and Eve are cast out of the Garden of Eden because Eve was tempted by a serpent. Ike argues that this represents a change in human and reptilian relationships. According to Ike, reptilians used to walk the earth and humans were aware of their existence. But as we mentioned at some point, they went underground and hid from humans and started the crossbreeding process. That moment when they went undercover is called the schism, and that is what the story of Adam and Eve represents. Besides the story of Adam and Eve, another biblical passage that supposedly references the reptilians is Genesis chapter 6, verses 1-4, through 4, which reads, When human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal, their days will be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. Ike says that this is again evidence of the interbreeding. Nephilim is an ambiguous term, but it is commonly believed to mean those who have descended or the fallen ones, leading people to believe that Nephilim are fallen angels or greater beings. Ike believes that they were actually reptilians who interbred with the daughters of humans and then their offspring became the hybrid human reptilians. Finally, in the book of Revelation, Satan is described as a serpent and a dragon, and he is cast down to earth with his angels. Ike believes that this is a Draco and his reptoids. Of course, this theory only works if you believe in the Bible, but what's interesting is that the Bible isn't the only ancient source where there are stories of reptiles interacting with humans. Number 4. Snake Imagery Throughout the World Other evidence that Ike points to is the fact that civilizations throughout the world have reptile gods or worshipped reptile beings. One notable example is a figurine that was found in the area that was Mesopotamia and is now modern-day Iraq is from the time period just before civilization started, called the Ubaid period, 6500 to 3800 BC. It is a statue of a humanoid snake creature holding a baby. Besides this pre-civilization relic, there are other stories of reptile gods and demigods found throughout ancient history. Just to name a few, Mesoamerica had a winged serpent god called Quetzalcoatl, Hindus had a god called Naga that was half human and half cobra, Apep was the Egyptian god of chaos and is depicted as a cobra. This doesn't even include how many different cultures around the world have stories of giant reptiles like dragons. Ike says that these stories of reptile gods and dragons originated from when the reptilians operated out in the open before the schism. He also points out that throughout many cultures, there are stories similar to Adam and Eve where reptile creatures are the gatekeepers to special places like the Garden of Eden, or they give spiritual knowledge to humanity. Ike acknowledges that some of this may be metaphorical, but he believes that these stories are actually evidence of the schism. Number 3. Connection to the Greys 
If the reptilian elite New World Order conspiracy theory wasn't wild enough, the reptilians may also possibly be connected to the alien race known only as the Greys. Because, well, why not? According to a mysterious conspiracy writer named Jason Bishop III, the Greys are actually controlled by the reptilians. In terms of hierarchy of control, it goes winged dracos, non-winged reptoids, the Greys, and then us, the lowly humans on the bottom. There is even some speculation based on eyewitness accounts that there are actual crossbreeds of the greys and the reptilians. They look just like the greys, except they have reptile-like skin. Theorists believe that the reptilians have enslaved the greys, or they have formed an intergalactic alliance working together to keep humans down. Number 2. The Reptilians and the Illuminati one of the most well-known secret societies is the Illuminati, and according to some theorists, they are controlled by the Dracos. This idea was put forward by a man named Stuart Serdlow, who claims he was a survivor of the Montauk Project. In his book, Blue Blood, True Blood, Conflict and Creation, he claims that there are 13 royal families of the Illuminati. The leader of the Illuminati is called the Pindar, which is shortened from Pinnacle of the Draco and is a purebred reptile. According to Swerdlow, the Pindar is the head of the Rothschild family who has been the Pindar for centuries. The twelve other families, all of them incredibly powerful, influential, and rich, have different areas of expertise, and they control global finances, military technology and development, mind control, religion, and all the media. All thirteen of the ruling families are full-blooded reptilians, but the class of individuals who support the thirteen families, called the Committee of Three Hundred, are not. In fact, some of them do not even have any reptilian DNA, though most do. The Committee of Three Hundred supports the thirteen families by controlling the organizations like the NSA, CIA, Interpol, and the Mafia, just to name a few. Number 1. Their Goal the biggest question surrounding the reptilian conspiracy theory is why would they do it? Again, there is much debate on this. One belief is that they need our gold to help stabilize the atmosphere on their own planet. Another theory is that they just have a need for power and control and they enjoy living life as rulers. A third, incredibly metaphysical explanation involves the reptilians living in the fourth dimension. Essentially, one of the main things that the reptilians try to do is cause human suffering and to ensure that there is constant conflict. The reason they want to do this is because the reptilians actually consume negative energy like jealousy, fear, and anger as a source of food. Of course, without much proof that these giant, shape-shifting, interdimensional humanoid reptiles that have mastered intergalactic travel even exist, it's hard to know what their true master plan is. So we hope you enjoyed the ridiculous nature of that list. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Button below me now, as well as below the video. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.